let's talk frame rates. Getting started, I remember how overwhelming it was learning about frame rates, camera settings, editing, the list goes on. I wanted to create this video to help you understand how frame rates work so that way you can shoot in the correct frame rate ahead of time knowing how it's going to turn out when you put it in your editing timeline. I'm going to be using different clips shot at different frame rates and I'm going to be explaining as we go to hopefully give you guys a really good visual understanding of how everything works. Although I'm going to be using Final Cut Pro X, if you're using Premiere Pro or a different editing software, this same information is going to apply. So don't sweat it. Everything I edit and most commonly amongst other filmmakers is edited in a 24p timeline. In other words, that means that that timeline is set up for for a clip that was shot in 24 frames per second. If you throw in clips that were shot in higher frame rates like 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second, you're going to get different results and you have to understand what you have to do to make those clips play back naturally or shoot them ahead of time knowing that you're going to be slowing the clip down etc. To quickly break down frames per second, it simply means that when you're shooting in 24 frames per second, your camera's taking 24 images in one second. If you're shooting in 60 frames per second, your camera's taking 60 photos in one second to give you that movie effect. So it's similar to one of those animated art clip books that you can flip through and it looks like the animation is moving. So what I'm going to do now is start a project in Final Cut in a 24p timeline. I'm going to bring in different clips and kind of explain as I go to show you how I everything looks and that way hopefully in the future you can shoot everything in the correct frame rate knowing what it's going to look like in your timeline and get that look that you're going for. Now we're in Final Cut Pro X. I am going to start a new project. We're going to do frame rate tutorial. I'm going to leave my format in 4K because I shot all these clips in 4K on my camera. I'm going to do a 24 frame per second timeline. I'm going to leave that just like that so you could you could change your, your editing timeline. But typically, like I said, the most commonly used editing timeline is a 24p. So this timeline is set up for a frame that was shot in 24 frames per second. So you can see this first clip here was shot in 24 frames per second. So I'm gonna pull this clip into my timeline, detach the audio so we don't hear anything. I apologize that all these clips, I had the autofocus setting sensitivity way too high on my camera and it's kinda like trying to find me, so don't mind those jitters, but you can see that when I play this clip back in 24 frames per second, so you can see how as I move around, it looks very natural to the eye. The clip was shot in 24 frames per second. It's being put in a 24 frame timeline. So that is why it looks like natural motion. Now if I get rid of this clip and I go to this next one that was shot in 60 frames per second and I pull it in my 24p timeline, what this means is since this was shot in 60 frames per second, there are 60 images being taken in a second. So this clip has more information or more frames where it could be stretched out or slowed down to give you kind of a slow motion effect. You'll notice if I don't reduce the speed of this clip and I play it back, it's not terrible, but it also doesn't look very natural. It's kind of stuttery, and that's because the software is trying to throw away unused frames. There's there's 60 frames per second versus the clip before was 24, so it lined up perfectly. So with this clip, if I was shooting 60 frames per second, it would be because I'm shooting real estate or a wedding or something like that where I just want to get specific moments that I can actually slow down. So Final Cut Pro has a cool feature called automatic speed, and you can see when I click that, it's reducing this clip to 40% of its original speed because that's what this clip naturally stretched out in a 24p timeline should play back at so you'll now notice that when I play it you can see how it's kind of like a really smooth natural looking slow motion effect it's not super slow but it's slow motion nonetheless and that's because it was shot in 60 frames per second slowed down to 40 percent so to do that math you just take your, your editing timeline divided by the frames per second the footage was shot in, and that equals the percentage amount that it should be slowed down to. So in this case, you would take 24 divided by 60 equals 0.4. So that's 40% speed that a 60 frame per second clip should be slowed down to for its natural speed in a 24p timeline. Now if I get rid of that clip and I go to my clip that was shot in 120 frames per second and I pull this in a 24p timeline, very similar. If I do nothing to it, the software is trying to get rid of the unused frames. There's more frames than it needs in this timeline, so it kind of looks stuttery and quick. It's not terrible, but again something shot in 120 frames per second is meant to be slowed down in, in a 24 frame per second timeline. 
So if you take 24 divided by 120 frames per second, you're going to get 0.2. So that's 20%. Or if you want to go another step further, you, you take that number, that 0.2, you times it by 100% per se and then it's going to give you the number 20 which is 20 percent speed so if i go to automatic speed you can see now that it's stretched out this clip to its natural playback speed in a 24 frame per second timeline that's going to give you that really slow motion so that's typically if you're shooting some epic b-roll or something you really want to emphasize and slow down that's what you would use 120 frames per second for now 30 frames per second like this clip here you can only reduce to 80 percent speed so that's 24 divided by 30 you'll get 0.8 so that's showing you it's stretching it out to 80 percent speed for its natural playback you'll notice this will look really good in a 24p timeline because it's very similar in terms of that natural look but for another example if you wanted if you took this first clip we were looking at that was shot in 24 frames per second you put it in your 24p timeline and you went to automatic speed you're going to notice it stays at 100 percent speed because it was shot in 24 frames per second you can't really slow this footage down because it's just going to look choppy so let me show you if i were to reduce this to 50 percent speed and it stretches it out you're going to see now it's terrible slow motion it's very choppy because there's not enough frames to fill the gaps of of the slowed down speed so it's just giving you this choppy look. That's why if you want something to play back in smooth, slow motion, you have to prepare ahead of time and know what you're going to be filming and what you want it to look like when you put it in your timeline. So for me, like I said, if I'm shooting something like, you know, real estate, if I'm shooting a house, commonly I'm using a, this clip where it's shot in 60 frames per second because that allows me to slow it to 40% speed where it's not super slow, but it, but it really smooths out the footage and gives it just just a really nice look all right and for one last example i'm just going to start one more new project and the only thing i'm going to change is the editing timeline frame rate so for example if you normally shoot on your phone or you like to shoot in 30 frames per second then what you can do is start the project with a 30p timeline and when you pull those clips in for example if i pull this one in that was shot in 30 frames per second command r on my keyboard if you're in final cut you see how it's at 100 percent speed but now we're in a 30p timeline so this is going to play back at 30 frames per second some people even prefer this as like a natural motion but that's how it would look in your timeline if you set up your timeline to be 30p instead of 24p so i hope that makes sense and really quickly, like for another example, if I go over to automatic speed, this is going to keep it at 100% because now we're in a 30p timeline. So with all that information, I hope that makes sense. I hope all these examples were helpful. If they were, please consider liking the video, subscribing if you want to stick around for more coming up. I always appreciate that. And we'll see you guys in the next video.